The already scandal-hit World Cup in Qatar faces another role last night as it emerged England's captain Harry Kane could face a booking and potential suspension if he goes through with his decision to wear the One Love rainbow armband in a mark of solidarity for the LGBT plus community. The start to the tournament dissolved into something of a farce on Sunday evening after a series of controversies in recent days, including a last-minute alcohol ban, a largely empty stadium for the opening ceremony, and thousands of people involved in a crush to enter FIFA fan zones. Kane is determined to wear the rainbow armband ahead of today's first-round clash in the Middle East state, where homosexuality is still illegal. But FIFA has strict rules about apparel that can be worn by players, and the armband is not allowed under the code. Unless FIFA backs down today, the talismanic striker could face an immediate yellow card this afternoon if he walks out wearing the One Love armband as England take on Iran in their opening match. And if he wears it again in their second match, the skipper could be slapped with another yellow card, automatically banning him from the third game. Last night there were crisis talks as the standoff continued, but England's Football Association remained firm on taking a moral stand over wearing the rainbow armband, which is intended to signal respect for gay rights and equality in general. The latest row comes after the competition got off to a tumultuous start on Sunday, as it was officially opened by Morgan Freeman in a spectacular opening ceremony. The actor, 85, who four years ago apologized following accusations of sexual harassment, raised eyebrows narrated a toe-curling segment titled The Calling, telling hundreds of millions of people watching around the world. We all gather here in one big tribe. When the action on the pitch finally began, two seconds early as the referee did not wait for the stadium countdown to be over, there was bad news for the host nation. Watched by the Gulf States Royals and David Beckham, the home side lost 0-2 to Ecuador, whose fans mocked Qatar's alcohol ban by chanting Cuarimos Cerveza or We Want Beer. Beckham, who has been criticized for being a paid ambassador to the Qatar World Cup, watched from the VIP seats. The oil-rich nation has faced a barrage of criticism over its treatment of foreign workers, LGBT rights and social restrictions, staking its reputation on delivering a smooth tournament. It has been accused of trying to stage-manage the World Cup with fake fans to spin positive coverage. The Football Association, who also confirmed England's players will take the knee during the tournament, are determined for skipper Kane to wear the armband as a gesture of equality at a tournament that has been overshadowed in negativity over Qatar's human rights record. However, FA Chiefs were on Sunday night concerned about the possibility of Kane being shown a yellow card if he wears the armband as planned, because doing so would contravene FIFA's laws. The FA had expected a fine for breaching FIFA's statutes, but the prospect of Kane being booked, and hence facing a suspension, was a scenario English football's governing body were concerned about. Kane said. We have made it clear as a team, staff and organization, that we want to wear the armband. I know the FA are talking to FIFA, and by game time they will have had their decision. Head coach Gareth Southgate added. I know there are some conversations going on. A number of the European countries have spoken. We have made our position clear, so hopefully everything will be resolved before the game. The England vowed to lift the gloom back home and bring some real happinesses. He pledged to deliver for England and also promised that the team had been practicing penalties to avoid the traditional misery the team inflicts on the nation. England are one of nine countries wearing the One Love armband. Indeed, news of a possible booking also reached the Germany and Holland camp. Holland skipper Virgil van Dijk said ahead of his side's game versus Senegal. Nothing changed from our point of view. If I will get a yellow card for wearing it, then we would have to discuss it because I don't like to play while being on a yellow. The teams are understood to be putting pressure on FIFA to allow the armbands due to the conservative social norms that exist in Qatar. But FIFA have already been forced to give in to Qatari officials on key promises such as alcohol sales in a bid to keep the hosts on side. Yesterday, thousands of empty seats could be seen during the ceremony, but after the opening match kicked off at 4 p.m. UK time, the stadium designed to resemble a traditional Bedouin tent appeared to suddenly fill, with many seats taken by the show's performers. Qatar's emir, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, presided over the ceremony, flanked by FIFA president Gianni Infantino, who has drawn ridicule by branding European nations racist and saying he understood discrimination because he grew up with ginger hair and freckles. Last night's glitzy show, also featuring Yoon Cook of South Korean boy band BTS, was intended to draw a line under the controversies. 
But even as it unfolded, riot police were called to tackle crowd chaos at a fan zone in the capital. A crush of tens of thousands of fans pushed and shoved against police lines to enter the FIFA Fan Festival on Doha's Corniche, which is a giant TV screen for viewing matches and a beer tent. Riot police armed with batons and shields stood guard as supporters pleaded with officers to let them through. It's very risky people could die said one, Hadam al -Bareri. He said. Old people, women, they cannot handle crowds like this. And a further blow to organizers, Colombian star Maluma, who sings on the World Cup's official anthem, stormed out of a TV interview after being accused of whitewashing human rights abuses in Qatar. During the show, in a pointed ripus to criticism over Qatar's human rights record, Freeman put on an act with 20-year-old entrepreneur and influencer Ghanem Al Mufta, who was born with caudal regression syndrome, a rare disorder which impairs the development of the lower spine. He said to the Hollywood star, Come on over. When Freeman replied I'm not sure, am I welcome? Al Mufta said. We sent out the call because everyone is welcome. This is an invitation to the whole world. Freeman, whose films include Hollywood classic The Shawshank Redemption, told crowds in the Al Bayt Stadium. How can so many countries, languages and cultures come together if only one way is accepted? Last week, Qatar's Supreme Committee, run by the country's morality sheiks, slapped a last-minute ban on beer in the stadiums. Yesterday official sponsor Budweiser released a photo of tens of thousands of cans stacked in a warehouse, offering to give it all away to the World Cup winners. Morgan's appearance at the ceremony comes four years after he was accused of sexual misconduct by eight women and issued an apology to anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected by his behavior, saying it was never my intent. During the show, in a pointed ripus to criticism over Qatar's human rights record, Freeman put on an act with 20-year-old entrepreneur and influencer Ghanem Al Mufta, who was born with caudal regression syndrome, a rare disorder which impairs the development of the lower spine. He said to the Hollywood star, Come on over. When Freeman replied I'm not sure, am I welcome? Al Mufta said. We sent out the call because everyone is welcome. This is an invitation to the whole world. Freeman, whose films include Hollywood classic The Shawshank Redemption, told crowds in the Al Bayt Stadium. How can so many countries, languages and cultures come together if only one way is accepted? Last week, Qatar's Supreme Committee, run by the country's morality sheiks, slapped a last-minute ban on beer in the stadiums. Yesterday official sponsor Budweiser released a photo of tens of thousands of cans stacked in a warehouse, offering to give it all away to the World Cup winners. Morgan's appearance at the ceremony comes four years after he was accused of sexual misconduct by eight women and issued an apology to anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected by his behavior, saying it was never my intent. Football fans reacted with fury on social media, with one remarking acidly. It is so disappointing to see Morgan Freeman take the money and support an oppressive regime. Qatar last night said the crowd incident arose after the main gate was temporarily closed because the venue had reached capacity early. Empty seats were clearly visible in the background of the ceremony, and while these appeared to have filled with fans by the time of kickoff at 7 p.m. local time, they emptied again before the final whistle. Qatar was soundly beaten by a comfortable Ecuador in the opening match of the tournament, which the hosts demanded take place today, after it had been previously scheduled to take place on Monday. Losing 2-0, organizers were left red-faced as thousands of spectators departed while the game was still taking place in full view of the cameras. In a historic match, it is the first time the host nation has lost its opening game in any World Cup to date. Anger wasn't just directed towards the hosts, the BBC also came under fire in a tense opening day after Gary Lineker and fellow pundits Alex Scott and Alan Shearer chose to address the human rights abuses at the top of their program. Lineker said. It's the most controversial World Cup in recent history, and a ball hasn't even been kicked. Ever since FIFA chose Qatar back in 2010, the smallest nation to host football's greatest competition, has faced some big questions. From accusations of corruption in the bidding process to the treatment of migrant workers who have built the stadiums where many lost their lives. Homosexuality is illegal here, and women's rights are also in the spotlight. Also the decision to switch the tournament from summer to winter. Against that backdrop, there is a tournament to be played here that will be watched and enjoyed around the world. Stick to football say FIFA, well we will for a couple of minutes at least. Morgan Freeman kicked off the World Cup opening ceremony in Qatar today, in front of the country's royals and rows of empty seats, following weeks of criticism over the country's human rights record. 
The actor, 85, who four years ago apologized following accusations of sexual harassment and inappropriate behavior, today narrated the event's opening segment titled The Calling, telling viewers we all gather here in one big tribe, as fans descended on Doha City Center for the imminent kickoff of the world's greatest football festival. Freeman spoke with 20-year-old Qatari entrepreneur and influencer Ghanem Al Mufta, a FIFA World Cup ambassador who was born with caudal regression syndrome, a rare disorder which impairs the development of the lower spine who said to the actor, come on over. When Freeman replied I'm not sure, am I welcome? Al Mufta said. We sent out the call because everyone is welcome. This is an invitation to the whole world. Freeman replied. I remember, even after hearing the call, instead of seeing another way, we dismissed it and demanded our own way. And now the world feels even more distant and divided. How can so many countries, languages and cultures come together, if only one way is accepted? His appearance comes four years after he was accused of sexual misconduct by eight women and issued an apology to anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected by his behavior, saying it was never my intent. 16 people eight witnesses and eight who claimed to be victims had come forward to allege the actor engaged in inappropriate behavior and harassment as they worked alongside him. Football fans have reacted with fury on social media at the actor's appearance in the ceremony, with one calling it disappointing and another saying, when you have to act out a scene with Morgan Freeman welcoming the entire world to your country for a soccer tournament, maybe you shouldn't host the World Cup. The opening ceremony featured scenes titled Le Tower Afo, To Know One Another, followed by Chants of Nations, a World Cup medley, a showcase of the official mascots, and Yoon Cook of South Korean boy band BTS. Qatar's Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani arrived at the stadium flanked by FIFA president Gianni Infantino to a roaring crowd and took their seats alongside other Arab leaders. A show then unfolded on the pitch, featuring three Campbells, American actor Morgan Freeman, and a performance of a new tournament song called Dreamers, featuring singer Jungkook of K-pop boy band BTS, alongside Qatari singer Fahad al kubasi Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince and the presidents of Egypt, Turkey and Algeria, as well as the United Nations Secretary General, are among leaders at the in a tent-shaped stadium ahead of the first match between the hosts and Ecuador. Qatar, which has denied accusations of abuse of workers and discrimination, and FIFA hope the spotlight will now turn to action on the pitch. Organizers have also denied allegations of bribery for hosting rights. Inside Al Bayt Stadium, many seats were still vacant, with gridlock on the expressway leading to the arena, where cheers went up as Qatar's team appeared for their opening match. The soccer tournament, the first held in the Middle East and the most expensive in its history, is a culmination of Qatar's soft power push after a three-and-a-half-year boycott by Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain which ended in 2021. The UAE, whose rapprochement with Doha has been slower than that of Riyadh and Cairo, sent its vice president who is also ruler of Dubai, where many World Cup fans have opted to stay. For the first time, a direct commercial flight from Tel Aviv to Doha landed in Qatar on Sunday, despite the absence of formal bilateral ties, in a deal brokered by FIFA to carry both Palestinians and Israelis to the tournament. The Gulf state's Deputy Prime Minister Khalid al Atiyah, in remarks on state media, said Qatar was reaping benefits of years of hard work and sound planning. On Saturday, FIFA's Infantino rounded on European critics of Qatar, saying engagement was the only way to improve rights, while Doha has also pointed to labor reforms. Denmark's and Germany's team captains will wear One Love armbands as they prepare to compete in a conservative Muslim state where same-sex relations are illegal. Organizers say all are welcome while warning against public affection. Supporters today arrived at the Al Bayt Stadium for this afternoon's opening match, under a glaring sun in temperatures in excess of 30 degrees Celsius. The vice president of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is also Dubai's ruler, arrived in Qatar for the World Cup opening on Sunday, Qatar's news agency said. And Saudi Arabia's powerful crown prince and a delegation of ministers arrived in the neighboring country this morning to attend the opening ceremony, Saudi state media reported. Mohammed bin Salman was accompanied by the kingdom's energy, interior, foreign, commerce and investment ministers, as well as senior officials, including his national security adviser and head of the National Guard, the official Saudi press agency said. Qatari fans in crisp white thobes and women in black shayla headdresses and abayas were seen filing into the stadium, which has been designed to look like the tents used by nomads. 
They were accompanied by Ecuador fans, many of whom donned extravagant headdresses, balaclavas and masks, and carried their national flags. The atmosphere appeared friendly, with both sets of fans stopping to snap photos together outside the stadium's entry gates.